You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on Overachievement. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on Overachievement, the new model for exceptional performance by John Elliott, Ph.D. We'll start with a quote from Dr. John Elliott. He says, Overachievement is aimed at people who want to maximize their potential. And to do that, I insist you throw caution at the wind. Ignore the pleas of parents, coaches, spouses, and bosses to be realistic. Realistic people do not accomplish extraordinary things because the odds of success stymie them. The best performers ignore the odds. I will show that instead of limiting themselves to what's probable, the best will pursue the heart-pounding, exciting, really big, difference-making dreams, so long as catching them might be possible. End quote. You can feel the intensity from Dr. Elliot just in that quote. And if you're into achieving greatness and love to see the hero in action, whether it's Tiger Woods coming back for the playoff win or a great rock star performing live— and uh, you have visions of yourself being in that category, you'll love this book. John Elliott, relative of T.S. Elliott and a long line of Harvard presidents, is brilliant. He's one of the world's leading authorities on peak performers and isn't afraid to challenge the status quo of high performance. He's also a great writer, and this book is an incredibly fun, inspiring read. With John Elliott's articulate and brilliantly blunt explanations of what makes the great performers perform greatly. You'll learn to kick the deep breathing relaxation habits during pressure situations and, instead, to eat the stress like a power bar. You'll learn how to turn your cerebral cortex off like a squirrel scurrying across a high wire. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to know how to do that? (laughs) And a bunch of other tricks of the overachieving trade. As with so many of these great books, overachievement is a tough one to condense into a few pages because there is so much goodness in it. But that's what you pay me to do, so let's get to work. The book has two parts. One, the what of overachievement, where we get, quote, inside the minds of the overachiever. And two, the how on becoming an overachiever. We'll start with the most important part of the minds of the overachiever with our first big idea, the trusting mindset. Quote, to be sure, great performers are well-trained, experienced, smart, and in some cases divinely talented. But the way their brains work during a performance is a lot more like a squirrel's than like Einstein's. Like squirrels, the best in every business do what they have learned to do without questioning their abilities. They flat out trust their skills, which is why we call this high-performance state of mind the trusting mindset. Routine access to the trusting mindset is what separates great performers from the rest of the pack. End quote. Squirrels and tossing keys. In training versus trusting mindsets. That's where you'll find the keys to performing like a true rock star overachiever. Seriously, Elliot tells some great stories to bring his point home that if you want to be an overachiever, you've got to learn to turn off that overactive cerebral cortex of yours and just think like a squirrel. Imagine this. Have you ever seen a squirrel scurry across a telephone wire? What do you think it was thinking? Quick hint, it wasn't. Squirrels don't think. (laughs) They just scurry. Well, it's a little more complex than that. And Elliot goes into the cool science behind it. But the point is simple. They're not up there on a high wire thinking, oh my, this one's high. It's a little windy today. If I take a wrong step, that's going to hurt. Oh my God, it'll kill me actually. Okay, left front foot, now back right foot. Oh geez, this is harder than I thought it would be. Thoughts like that require a cerebral cortex. And if you want to get into what Elliot calls the trusting mindset, the mindset of overachievers, you need to learn to turn it off and give your skills free reign, not focusing on anything but the target of that particular moment. How about this? You ever toss your keys to a friend or spouse? If you're anything like the students in Elliot's classes with whom he's done this little test, you can hit your friend chest high every time. No worries. You just toss the keys, right? No worries, no stress, just see the target and toss. Welcome to the trusting mindset. Now imagine if all of a sudden you're in the middle of your favorite basketball team's arena, competing for a $1 million prize at halftime. You've got five other people out there, and we're going to see who can most consistently hit someone in the chest with their keys. Eek! (laughs) With something on the line, would you still have that calm and cool approach? You know, just stepping up and casually tossing the keys like you did before? 
totally independent of worries about the result, which would be the trusting mindset? Or would you start thinking about stuff from what you could win or lose to the fact you might look like a total idiot if you hit the guy in the knee or accidentally toss the keys over their head? Enter what Elliot calls the training mindset. Guess what? The top performers in any field perform in the trusting mindset. Whether it's a brain surgeon or a basketball player, a deal maker or a golfer, they all trust their swing and focus on nothing but the target of that particular moment. Of course, there's a time for training in every field, and then there's the time for trusting. As Elliot says brilliantly, quote, selling is very different from trying to be a salesman. That A, you got a business school in sales and marketing isn't what's going to close the deal. In fact, if all you're doing is thinking about what you should do, You're going to look like a self-conscious goof and do anything but close. When you're in the middle of a deal, you've got to turn that part of your brain off and just trust yourself, end quote. The book is all about helping us get in and live in that trusting mindset in the pressure-packed moments of our lives when our destinies are determined. Great stuff. One more example among many to bring the point home between the trusting mindset and the training mindset How about the difference between the cerebral cortex-free squirrel scurrying across the wire and the hesitant, overthinking individual getting stuck? Elliot does another experiment where he lays a two-by-four on the ground and asks his students to walk over it. Everyone does it perfectly. They take one step, then another, in perfect position on the board. No issue. That's the trusting mindset. Then he raises the two-by-four off the ground. Then what happens? Enter the training mindset. All of a sudden, we're thinking about it, and we take tentative, calculating steps and faltering steps. If we want to be overachievers, we must develop our trusting mindset. And we need to, next big idea, eat stress like an energy bar. Quote, working on techniques to manage stress is a bit like trying to win the Indy 500 by putting a governor on the engine of your race car or swapping out a powerful V12 for a V4 because it offers a quieter ride. You wouldn't do that. Not if you were after the checkered flag. Not if you were racing star Jeff Gordon. No superstar is about to give his opponents an edge. Nor should you by trying to relax when the pressure's on. End quote. I love that. Again, a huge theme of the book is that we've got to learn to welcome pressure and then flow with it, not try to breathe ourselves into a calm island somewhere and avoid the pressure. As Elliot says, the pressure offers us an opportunity to play at our edge and push just beyond it to the next edge. Avoiding the edge and floating off to a meditative island when the pressure's on, not so good. After a while, rather than a means to an end, that relaxed state becomes the end in and of itself which is death to overachievement. All right, how about this big idea? Bill Russell and barfing. Quote, Bill Russell is one of the great names in basketball, an All-American, the only athlete to ever win an NCAA championship, an Olympic gold medal, and a professional championship all in the same year, 1956. But Bill Russell had this one problem. He threw up before every game. (laughs) What a great story. So Elliot tells the brilliant story about the correlation between Bill Russell's barfing and his world-class play. In brief, Russell sucked when he wasn't so nervous that he booted before a game. He had the greatest slump of his career in 1963 when he didn't throw up for most of the season. Then, when entering the arena for the playoffs and seeing the crowd gathering hours before the game, his nerves kicked in and kicked his dinner out. And he went out and had the best game of the season. Of course... We don't need to throw up to bring our A game. We do, however, need to become friends with the butterflies, learn to welcome stress, enjoy it, and make it work to our advantage. Which leads us to the next big idea, pressure and anxiety. Quote, the physical symptoms of fight or flight are what the human body has learned over thousands of years to operate more efficiently and at the highest level. Anxiety is a cognitive interpretation of that physical response. All right, so time for some important distinctions. First, let's recognize that when the pressure's on, your body goes into an altered, higher state of performance, mobilizing your body to get it on. Elliot walks us through a genius description of how our bodies take energy away from non-essential activities and channel it into performing at the highest level possible. So we need to realize a couple things, according to Elliot. One, everything that your body does to you when the pressure is on is good for performance. 
Two, pressure is different from anxiety. Nervousness is different from worry. Powerful stuff. That leads us to the next big idea, ultimate knowing. Quote, confidence is a resolute state of mind by which you believe nothing is impossible. End quote. You have that kind of confidence? Good. Deep breath in. Hold that vision of what you want. What is your biggest dream? Exhale. Know you can get it. Smile and repeat. And then, most importantly, take massive action toward your goal. Which is the next big idea. Positive thinking versus positive action. Exceptional thinkers learn to trust their consciousness. Elliot says, they teach themselves the power of positive action. They don't stop to think about how great the act is going to be. Instead, they act, end quote. Nice. Positive action. It really is a panacea. (laughs) What does the situation demand? Do it. Don't think about how great you're going to do it or all the wonderful things in your life that will come as a result or, even worse, all the negative things that might happen. Just do it. And as you do that, you're going to want to embrace the next big idea. Put yourself on super pilot. Quote, the true exceptional performer is on super pilot. Every single sense, every fiber of his body is brought together in what he is doing. End quote. Elliot provides a highly compelling description of how top performers put themselves into what some would call flow or the zone. Whereas the other researchers, like Csikszentmihalyi in flow and Jim Lore in The Powerful Engagement, You can see the notes on both of those, by the way. Those guys imply that the top performers are on autopilot. Elliot sees them on superpilot, totally engaged in the moment, and not in some mellow cruise control autopilot kind of way. Rather, they're completely tuned into the moment, channeling their stress into a heightened superpilot mode of engagement. They're not setting goals and evaluating their performance as they go. That would be the training mindset from above. Rather, these top performers are putting all of their attention on their next target. Huge distinction. The price of the book is paid for just to get Elliot's points on the power of concentration and being in super pilot mode. And as we do that, we embrace the next big idea, let it happen. Quote, great performers focus on what they're doing and nothing else. They're able to engage in a task so completely that there is no room left for self-criticism, judgment, or doubt to stay loose and supremely, even irrationally self-confident. They let it happen, let it go. They couldn't care less about the results, end quote. Wow. That reminds me of Krishna's advice to Arjuna in the classic Bhagavad Gita of Hinduism. He says to his tentative warrior, quote, The awakened sages call a person wise when all his undertakings are free from anxiety about results. Brilliant. So when you sit down to write or to negotiate a deal or to program a piece of software, to paint or to parent or to do whatever it is that you do, are you focused completely on what you're doing or are you focused on the results of the action, all the ways you could slip up here or slip up there? I know in my own experience, writing these notes, recording these notes, that there's a profound difference between the quality of my writing and speaking when I'm simply sitting down, immersing myself in the rhythm of the book and my writing and speaking, just letting it flow trusting myself completely versus when I sit down and worry about how it's coming together or whether it's coming together at all and all that other not so fun stuff. How about you? My hunch is we share this in common. As Dr. Elliot advises, don't worry about the results and just quote, stay loose and supremely, even irrationally self-confident. Let it happen. All right. And the next big idea is called nuts and geniuses. Quote, history, though, shows us that the people who end up changing the world, the great political, social, scientific, technological, artistic, even sports revolutionaries, are always nuts until they're right, and then they're geniuses. End quote. (laughs) I love that. Reminds me of Apple's genius ad. You might remember it. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. 
And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Ah, I love that. You can just hear that and see that video, can't you? If you can't, you can check it out on the website. It's actually in my bio section. Um, So, back to the story. Elliot tells us some great stories about nuts turned geniuses, from Michael Dell, who ordered a high school diploma from a newspaper ad in the third grade, (laughs) to Richard Branson, who's rocked all kinds of boats and is now rocking intergalactic flight. That isn't crazy. I don't know what is. How about you? Are you crazy enough to trust yourself while the world thinks you're a little nuts? Good. That's an essential ingredient of overachievement. So what are your crazy dreams? Come on, what are the really big dreams? What do you get giddy about achieving when you really let yourself go? What would you dare to dream if you knew you were guaranteed to succeed? Nice. Now we're getting some momentum. Much closer to your really crazy dreams. Now go farther if you want to really change the world. And the final big idea is incredible dreams and being unrealistic. Quote, you will not do incredible things without an incredible dream. End quote. You should get the book, if you haven't already decided to get 10 of them for you and your friends, for the chapter on, quote, embracing the last taboo, being as unrealistic as you can. End quote. It's one big inspiring quote. The essence is very simple. If we want to live a life of greatness, if we want to honor that deep drive within each of us to fully express ourselves in this precious hero's journey of ours, we must step outside of what's reasonable and dare to dream big and then have the courage to protect that dream from those around us who tell us to be realistic. As Eliot says, quote, as soon as anyone starts telling you to be realistic, cross that person off your invitation list. So, what are your dreams? As Elliot asks, quote, if you could do anything at all, what would it be? What a powerful question. We can just end right there and you can go on with your meditating on that idea um, if you'd like. If you'd like to hear a little bit more about John Elliot, the author of Overachievement, and some other notes I think you'd like, and the uh, extra quotes in the PDF sidebar, then go ahead and keep on listening. So uh, John Eliot, author of Overachievement, is a relative of T.S. Eliot and a long line of Harvard presidents. He's an award-winning professor of management, psychology, and human performance and holds faculty appointments at Rice University, the University of Houston, the Texas Medical Center, and the SMU Cox School of Leadership. He is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Dartmouth College and co-founder of the Milestone Group, a consulting firm providing training, assessment, and education to business executives, professional athletes, physicians, performing artists, and corporations nationwide. Dr. Elliott's clients have included, among others, Deloitte, Accenture, Shell, SAP, the San Antonio Spurs, the Dallas Cowboys Golf Club, the Washington Capitals, and the Chicago White Sox, among many, many others. That's all from his site where you can learn more. Check it out at overachievement.com. And if you like this note, I have a strong feeling you're going to like the philosopher's notes on Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Ralph Waldo Emerson, The Other 90%, Get Out of Your Own Way, Tony Robbins, The Magic of Thinking Big, Feel the Fear, and Do It Anyway. And I'm sure a bunch of other ones in there, but those are some of my favorites I think you'll really like. All right, let's take a look at the quotes and wrap it up. All right, so all of these quotes from the sidebar on the PDF are from John Elliott. We'll start with, great performers are, by definition, abnormal. Thinking is a habit, and like any other habit, it can be changed. It just takes effort and repetition. Elliot says, I will show you how you too can consistently achieve the kind of intense focus that marks all the best performers in the world. I will show you how to reshape your thinking so you will be able to trust your skills and experiences and let them rip to perform so freely and intensely that you will become not just good at what you do, but something of an artist at it. And he says, Butterflies, cotton mouth, and a pounding heart make the finest performers smile. The smile of a person with an ace up their sleeves. They definitely would agree with Tiger Woods, who has often said, The day I'm not nervous stepping onto the first tee, that's the day I quit. And I have discovered that I cannot enhance anybody's performance without getting them not only to live with the butterflies that come with high-pressure jobs, but to embrace that kind of physical response. Enjoy it. Get into it. 
That's the real first ticket to being a performer who thinks exceptionally. And he says, confidence is not a guarantee of success, but a pattern of thinking that will improve your likelihood of success, a tenacious search for ways to make things work. And he says, I have found that the top players in every field think differently when all the marbles are on the line. Great performers focus on what they are doing and nothing else. They are able to engage in a task so completely that there is no room left for self-criticism, judgment, or doubt. To stay loose and supremely, even irrationally self-confident. To just step up and do what they're good at, concentrating only on the simplest nature of their performance. And he says, great performers focus on what they are doing and nothing else. Anyone who strives too far from the majority or the conventional wisdom is bound to be labeled arrogant or a maverick, a wild man, weird, or even crazy. And finally, exceptional thinkers ignore their critics and go about their business making history. Well, that's a pretty intense look at overachievement. Uh, Like I said, I highly recommend you go out and get the book if this resonated with you. Simply a phenomenal book. And uh, I wish you much success in your pursuit of overachievement. Hope you enjoyed and look forward to sharing more with you. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.